In order for us to make the diagnosis of fibromuscular dysplasia, we have to see the string of beads appearance of the artery or a focal area of narrowing of the artery. That's the sine qua non of fibromuscular dysplasia. Nobody gets into the U.S. registry for FND without that. But I had recently written an editorial called The Expanding Clinical Phenotype of Fibromuscular Dysplasia. And that's based on the fact that I have seen a number of family members that don't necessarily have the string of beads but have other features to suggest FMD. Let me give you an example. I call it the story of the three sisters. Sister one had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection and fibromuscular dysplasia of the carotid arteries. Sister two had fibromuscular dysplasia of the renal arteries and high blood pressure. Sister three, who was the patient I saw first, had an isolated splenic artery aneurysm and significant arterial tortuosity. I didn't discuss that before, but about 34% of patients with FMD have tortuous or very curvy arteries. And the carotid artery often takes the shape of an S, the so-called S-curve. So sister three who has arterial tortuosity and an aneurysm, we don't have enough evidence to say she definitely has FMD. But her two other sisters have the string of beads. So I do think there are certain patients who have FMD and may not necessarily present with a string of beads, but with other manifestations of the disease. There's a number of patients who are referred to me who have had a dissection of the carotid or the vertebral artery, blood flow supplying the brain. They're often diagnosed with having fibromuscular dysplasia, but a dissection alone in these arteries is not enough to call it fibromuscular dysplasia. So, we in our consensus documents have stated that you cannot make a diagnosis of FMD if you see a string of beads in an artery that has a tear in it or a dissection. And there's a large registry in Europe called, called the CASDIP registry run by Stephanie DeBet. And in her registry, only about 20% or so of patients with carotid or vertebral dissections have fibromuscular dysplasia. So while this is not fibromuscular dysplasia as the way that I have explained it previously, the genetic locus, the PRACTA1 locus, is involved in spontaneous carotid and vertebral dissections as it is in classical fibromuscular dysplasia.